Welcome back. This is the 17th episode in creating a third person controller in Godot. If this is your first time seeing this, check the link in the description for the entire playlist if you want to follow from the beginning. Today, we are going to start setting up our character animations and using the animation tree. That's right, we're going to start delving into Godot's infamous animation tree player. Don't worry, I'll be here to make sure it doesn't cause you too much trouble. But first, if you're enjoying this, hit the like button and subscribe. Want the whole course right now? Become a channel member or join my Patreon for instant access to every episode. If you'd rather own it forever, grab the course on Udemy, links below. Let's get started. We're ready to start creating our character model for this third person controller. First things first, we've got a mesh here that we no longer need. Uh, so we can just go ahead and remove that. I'm going to delete. And what I like to do in this case is actually create a new scene for the character model. So I'm just going to call it character model. And essentially I'm just going to bring in that spacesuit animated uh, FBX file. I'm going to reset its position so it's in the right spot. And it can just be a chart of that and we can stack all the other different nodes that we need to control this animation because it will become quite complicated as time goes on in this node and have a script to run all that separate from the player, right? And we'll just call signals to the player and everything will work really smoothly and not be interconnected, if that makes sense. So uh, you want to click editable children, not make local. I know I did in the other one, but that was mostly just so I could show you guys the node and all that kind of stuff. Editable children is much better because if we need to re-import this, we want to make sure that everything still is linked up essentially, because if we make it local, when we re-import, we'll have to delete the node and bring it back in. It's, it gets messy. It's not impossible, but it's just better just to make it editable children. We've got all these animations, right? Um, but how do we, how do we control all of this, right? How do we know what to do and when, right? We've got these animations and we want to play. Okay. So we want to play the walking forward when perhaps we're aiming. Um, and have we got run forward unarmed? Yep. Uh, when we're moving forward, we just want to play this animation, right? And all that kind of stuff, you know? So the way that we can control that, first of all, is with an animation tree player or animation tree as it's called these days. And this is really important to have because it allows us to blend the animations together. So we need to assign an anim, a nim player and we also need to do a tree root. So the tree root for us, I like to use um, the uh, blend tree. Uh, you can also use state machine. That's perfectly fine. But essentially there's a couple of different ways that you can run these and it works totally fine. So we use a blend tree and we need an anim player. Obviously we're going to assign that to the anim player from the, uh, imported animation, right? How can we get animations to play? We simply just right click anywhere on this grid and we can choose between a bunch of different, um, choices, right? Animation being the most basic. Right, that allows us to choose an, any animation for this particular node. Right, so let's just say if we want that walk forward, where is it? Walk forward unarmed, it gets pretty long. And we just connect up that to the output. And you can see that our animation just starts to run. But we need something more complicated than this, right? We need to be able to choose between a bunch of different animations. So we have something here called a transition node, right? And we can actually put this in between the two and transition between the different states, much like our state machine. And so uh, what we can have here is inputs, right? And we can add elements and add elements and add element. So we might have uh, idle. We might have a uh, walk. We might have a uh, run. We'll just call it run, uh, sprint. And we also have jump, right? Okay, and so that's the output. And this is the walk forward. So we can actually just connect that there and we choose walk, right? So now everything's working. And we can start to bring in those other animations. So say we want idle. I'm just gonna do the unarmed ones for now since we don't have any weapons. Um, so we can go and we can look for the idle unarmed. I have two choices in if you download the um, asset from the course, I have two idle choices. You can choose between the two. Um, this one is a little bit more, uh, how to say, like he moves around a little bit more, the character. I like it. Okay, so we've got our idle, we've got our walk. We just need to bring in our run. I might zoom out a little bit. 
Um, and so we choose animation and we can choose our uh, run, run forward unarmed, right? Okay, choose that, wrong node here. There we go. And if we choose run, now we've got that. Animation and sprint forward unarmed, right? And I'm just testing these as I go along to make sure that they're the right animation. Okay, that looks right. And finally, we've got our, I think it's called fall idle. Yeah, fall idle. This is we're gonna be doing at most of our blending since that is just how that looks. Okay, so we've got all of our animations lined up here. Now, the thing you might notice is that the transition between all of these is very instant. And there's actually a, a, a variable here called X fade time, cross fade time. Uh, so we can choose to cross fade. So what we can do is we can put like 0.2 in that. And so when you go to idle to walk, you can see that it moves pretty smoothly between the two. And then the other thing that I like to do is just put sync. I feel like it just helps a little bit better. It's not going to be perfect. We're not going to get like uh, perfect uh, movement, foot movement. When we decide to stop, it's still going to like not, if you were really looking, wouldn't look as good as if you put in more intentional state changes between all of these animations, but it looks good enough. Okay, so we have our very basic transition uh, state machine. Now, you can name these nodes and we will need to name some of them. You don't necessarily need to name these. You can if you want to. So you could just call this idle. You can call this walk, run, sprint, and in air. Maybe it's not really jumping. Um, okay, so we've got these animations named. Now you really only need to name them if you're intending to reference them by a code. So I'm gonna call this the unarmed, unarmed uh, uh, movement. We'll call it that unarmed movement. And that'll be our transition state for when we're not holding a weapon. Now we don't have weapons right now, so we're just gonna work on this part of the code. It's much simpler. So it's a lot easier to demonstrate, right? As we get started, right? So now we've got this nice little state machine here and we've got all of our different uh, transitions that we can go to. And this is where it gets exciting. I'm just gonna save this. Um, we'll go to the assets. We can save this under character model, right? Character model. Now this is where it gets really exciting because We've done all this groundwork. We've spent hours creating a state machine uh, that can easily move us between different states. And now we also have a state machine here. And what do you think gets really easy to do when you have a state machine in both locations? It's controlling this. This is gonna be really easy to put together, right? So we do need to actually change the state, right? We're gonna need a script and we'll add it to the character model, right? Character model, character model, that's fine. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is actually give this a class name, not because I intend to use it in other places, but simply because it's going to be easier to reference when we're calling code from the player script. The functions become visible then. Uh, we don't really need a process. I'll leave ready there. We might need it later. But what we do need is a function, right? And we can just call it on state machine state changed right and it's going to take a state and it's a string right it doesn't need to return or anything okay we'll put pass now see if you can understand where i'm going with this we can actually just emit a signal from our state machine that's controlling our movement to the script and just call on whatever state we want to transition to now we do need to uh, actually call on the animation tree. So I'm gonna set up an export variable here, just called animation tree of animation tree, okay. So how do we call to the animation tree? Well, you do it uh, with a node path. That's I think the right terminology. So everything that we can do here is essentially a, a path. So if we actually click the animation, tree we've got parameters unarmed movement current state transition request right so this if you ever need to know what to look for is something you can come to for the animation tree the parameters and and this is the string that we need to pass in to actually 
do this. And if you hover over transition request, you can see it there. Parameters, unarmed movement, transition request. That's the property that we need to, to change. So actually it's not a node path, it's a property path, right? So we just go animation tree and we put the square brackets in and then it's a string, right? So you go parameters slash unarmed movement. You can just copy if you don't feel like typing at all. That way, you know, you're not going to get it wrong slash transition request. And then you can just equal to state. So now you can sort of see how this is going to work. This state as a string needs to match these. But what are these really similar to? They're really similar to our states. Obviously not all of them, like aim, walk, and uh, sprint, jump, and all that kind of stuff. They're a little bit different, but it becomes very easy to understand how this is going to all connect together. So we'll work on creating a signal for that and updating those animations in the next episode. I'll see you there. All right, that is all for this episode. I hope you found it helpful. Next week, we are going to fix up our character rotations. If you're finding this series helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to get access to every single episode, then you can become a channel member or you can join the Patreon as well. And if you want to get outright access to this course without paying a monthly fee, then you can buy the course on Udemy. That's all for this week. I'll see you guys next time.